Hi everybody, this is Jonathan and Angela Scott, the Big Cat People, talking to you from our glorious garden here in Nairobi. Now, this is the beginning of a new strand for our YouTube channel, and we're calling it the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's going to be life, conservation, and photography. A little bit about everything. And so this is something that we want to share with you, because we know that at this time, it's really, really tough. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter whether you're old, whether you're young, whether you're going to school, or whether you're in retirement. Our whole world has changed. As our friend Steve Shelley said, it's the end of the world as we know it. Now that sounds pretty dramatic, doesn't it? And we've been, Angie and myself, in lockdown here at home in Nairobi for the last six months. And so personally, what has that meant for us? Well, no knee replacement operation which was planned for me. No carpal tunnel syndrome on both wrists, no operation there either. And for Angie, all the struggles and hardships that she faces with an autoimmune disease. But the bottom line is we wake up every morning to the sound of birdsong, to robin chats, to heart lobs, to raccoons, to those noisy, no, <laughs> noisy, nauseous, those noisy hardidar ibis flying overhead. And we celebrate simply being alive. Now you could say, well, that's okay for you. You're lucky. You live in the land of the big cats. Yes, we do but everybody is battling right now. And if you think you're not, stop and just think again, because not only has the world changed, but there won't be a getting back to normal. There might be a new normal, but if we simply think that we can go back to the way things used to be, then that's a failure. A failure on our part to recognize that things like COVID, climate change, these horrendous bushfires and how our hearts goes out to the people in the United States, in Australia, in the Amazon, where their lives and livelihoods are being destroyed. And why? Because we haven't been listening to the essential voice of nature. And that's why we founded something called the Sacred Nature Initiative. But for the moment, that's life. And we would say, if you're a youngster thinking, oh my goodness, as you might rightly do, what happened to my career? What happened to my, the chance to travel, the dreams of having a life like we have? Well, all we can say is that things will change and opportunities will be there. And this is the time to plan, prepare, so as you're ready to take advantage of it. And that applies to all of us. We have, while we've been here, been trying to stay fit, trying to eat healthily, trying to be more environmentally friendly in the way that we live. We've been writing Sacred Nature 2, Volume 2, more about that on another day, which our son and his fiance David and Tori are intimately involved with the design and everything that goes into making a book as beautiful as the last one, Sacred Nature, Life's Eternal Dance, Volume 1. So, that's life. What about conservation? Well, I think now we are facing a huge crisis because here at home in Kenya, international tourism collapsed. And we all know that tourism is vital to sustaining our wild areas. Countries like Kenya, countries where so much of the last great swaths of biodiversity, whether it's the Galapagos, whether it's Madagascar, or whether it's here, whether it's the Masai Mara, these extraordinary areas, the fact is that the purse strings have tightened because tourism is the mainstay of keeping those areas viable. But wonderfully, our president, Uhuru Kenyatta, said and recognized the need to actually subsidize these areas, areas such as the Mara, areas such as the wildlife conservancies, those fabulous places to visit around the periphery of the reserve. Alario Motorogi, Alari Motorogi, Mara North, Leopard Gorge, Fig Tree Ridge, places that we love to visit. And every year with Brian Hall and the EOS Seminar Group, Big Cat Safari in October, not this year, but for the last 15 years, yes, and next year, you better believe it. And so we have to think, if those conservation models were based on tourism, how are we going to actually make up the difference? Yes, by our president, putting money into the reserve, extra money, money into tourism, 
because so many people have lost their jobs. So many people are waiting for the return of overseas visitors. Yes, we've got local tourism, but we need more than that. But we have to play safe as well. We don't want people to risk becoming infected with COVID, even though right here in Kenya, miraculously, there seems to be a very low incidence in terms of mortality, and that we have to be incredibly grateful for. And also, money has gone into the conservancies, as I say, propping up the tourism industry. And, but we're going to struggle if you, wherever you're listening to us, from India, from America, from the UK, people who have visited this wonderful place had, have taken a safari, have had the time of their life, a transformative adventure on safari here in Kenya or in East Africa, anywhere in East Africa, Southern Africa, then we have to think how we can get the international community to help in these circumstances. And we know many of you have been doing it. There have been sales of prints from wildlife photographers, wonderful. And there have been people who, big companies, who have said, we're putting our hands in our pockets and we're going to help fund the difference. And what a wonderful initiative I just heard the other day, or we just heard the other day, that David Attenborough, Sir David, the great man, was announcing, which was this idea of international companies that use big charismatic animals, tigers, lions. As a kid, I used to watch Esso, the advert of a tiger running along the beach. Must have been a tame one. Those companies have agreed 0.05% of their advertising budget will go back to protecting those species. So conservation, a work in progress. But I loved what the great Dr. George Schaller said, you know what, we can try, people talk about natural resources, natural resources, as if we own nature, as if we can mine it and use it and actually just turn it to our needs. But nature needs to be at the center. Nature is everything. It's where we come from. It is life itself. That's why we called our project Sacred Nature Initiative, the book, Sacred Nature, the next one, reconnecting people to our planet. And so what we have to do is that we've got to actually ensure that we can find ways to keep our planet, to nurture it, to not just mine it and utilize it, to realize that all of these problems that we're facing, environmental problems, you can call it fake news if you want, but believe me, it'll be the biggest mistake of your life. Listen to the science not to the gossip. We posted today on Instagram a very important thing, as wonderful as it is, and everybody's a photographer today, out there with their phones, with their point and shoots, but the fact is, photography, taking a picture, should be something special, not just to show that you were there. Yes, that's fine, but if you want to take the next step to becoming a photographer, then you need to really think about why you're doing it. And secondly, you need to take pictures every day. If you want to be a photographer, take pictures. Pick up your camera. But the big thing is this. If we go out into places like the Masai Mara with our cameras and we crowd around predators or at the river crossing sites and we get hugely excited and competitive, that ego driving us to get the shot and get a better shot than anybody else, we'll give it a break. People have been photographing the migration for years. There will always be better ways to try and capture the essence of the safari. But the fact is you're dealing in reality. Those wildebeest are real living, breathing creatures. Just remember that. If you want to take pictures and actually risk the very thing that you should be looking at and eulogizing and getting down on your knees and th say thank you nature's creativity for this opportunity, then please, please, please join the club. That we're, look, we've made mistakes at times getting overexcited taking pictures. We're no, you know, angels, but we're aware of the negative impact of what photography can do. It's a wonderful medium to share what we see, and especially now with COVID, when you can't travel. I was looking at a beautiful picture of Greet Van Meldren, a great friend of ours, of gorillas celebrating the time up in Windy National Park with Rafiki, the gorilla that was slaughtered. Well, the fact is, 
You can look at an image. You don't have to leave your house. You can stay safe for the moment and just say, hallelujah, thank you, nature. Let's be respectful photographers. Let's say to ourselves that we want to be honorable. We want to treasure and acknowledge the fact that these creatures we so love to see, the lions, the leopards, half-tails, Zawadi, Shakira, honey, the marsh pride, Scarface on his last legs, but what a warrior, what a hero. What we love and respect about these animals is there's no artifice. They are what they are. They do what they do. There's an honesty to what they do. We can learn from that. I hope you're still with us. Thank you so much. You hear the heart of our ibis? Just flying overhead. Bye-bye. And thank you so much from, there they go, from Angie and myself. Take care. Bye-bye.